Hi, Emerald. Thank you so much for taking your time to talk with us today. This is such an intense series. Was there something about Pedro or about the storyline that really made you want to be a part of this series? Well, certainly. The series is based in real facts. And we had the privilege of, through Breno, actually hearing the entire history of the from the father of Pedro directly from there. So there's a series of situations that really took place because he lived there. He was there. The most absurd situation, the most intense, uh, re the most intense things that we show in the series, they're real. So when I received the invitation to take part in the series, I was scared and I was thinking, well, these are situations that are so absurd that it seems difficult to believe. However, when I started to understand that the focus would be the relationship, the family relationship between the father and the son, then I thought it was fascinating because he, Pedro, was a fascinating character. He he has a dark side because of the relationship of the chemical dependency and the relationship with uh, the drugs and criminality that actually gives you all of that adrenaline behind the series. But there is also the family drama, his relationship with his dad. I mean, a love that you can see between the father and the son that they never give up each other. And at the same time, Pedro is a very charismatic, very uh, captivating persona. So to me, it was very attractive to play this role so I can really talk about the history. I mean, this was well known in Rio de Janeiro, but in Brazil and more on the side of the criminality. And without excluding, of course, you know, I could take this character and I could look at him beyond being a criminal, but seeing him as a as a human being with all of his defects, all of his qualities, all of his uh, negatives. It was very interesting. Talk about Pedro's relationship with his father and what causes the rift between them that sort of sends Pedro down this dark spiral. Well, we there is a lot of things that we talk about and from Vitor, that he said that he and the son were the two sides from the same coin. So they have very, that very strong bond, that very strong love that unites them. But because of the irony of faith, Vitor uh, spent his whole life fighting against drugs and mainly about you know drug tra trafficking and cocaine, and his son got addicted to cocaine. And then he became a very well-known criminal in Rio de Janeiro. But there, there is a relationship there, a love bond that bonds them. And as I've told you, it, there is a lot of uh, real feelings. They, they walk hand in hand uh, throughout the story. And this is a very thrilling, very beautiful relationship. It's a tra tragedy, of course, that is even announced. And in real life, it is what happened in the end. And this motivated Vitor to want to actually tell his son's story. And it's a, a lot of emotion involved here. Yeah, speaking about the emotions involved, there's so many intense scenes between you and almost every character in this movie, uh, excuse me, in this series. What were some of the scenes that challenged you the most to film? Well, I would say that in general, they were the scenes that Pedro actually faced the consequences of his actions with the losses that he had, with the pains that he had. All those scenes were emotionally very draining, very painful, because that's life. You you revisit feelings and, and an emptiness of seeing what happened with his friend, what happened with his family because of his choices. 
and a very big pain. To me, this scenes, but the action scenes, these scenes from that emotional pain from that hole, it was very intense. It was very painful to, to actually play them. How did you shake off then a long day of being on set and filming the series? Right. That was a big issue because we had the privilege of filming chronologically. Basically, the entire scenes were chronologically filmed. So it was a one week and then the full day. Uh, we had sequences in the series that were very action filled. Sometimes it was several days filming these scenes with a lot of intensity. And then coming back to my home, it was complicated because I had, as you said, I had to build up on that visceral action. But I always try to, you know, when I came back home, I wanted to reconnect with myself. And I do that through small actions, small things that are only mine. You know, watching uh, some something on TV or listening to a specific song or being with my girlfriend. I mean, these are reconnections with myself, with my own self, because they are so strong emotions. I cannot say that they do not affect me, but this is fundamental. When I come back home, I want to disconnect so that the next day I can be in, you know, I can really work and give my 100%. Uh, otherwise, it would be very difficult to do this day by day. What would you hope viewers take away from watching Dom or what did you even personally take away from being a part of this show? I believe that one of the big merits, one of the biggest virtues of our series is to never judge. We do not place any labels on the situations. I mean, it's very obvious, it's very clear that there are situations, there are actions that are wrong, there are crimes that are committed. But at the same time, when you look at the person that is committing the crime, which is the main character of the series, and you see the chemical dependency, you see the drug addiction, you see the relationship with the parents, you understand since adolescence, when he started to get addicted early on, when he was a minor, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm not trying to justify something that is wrong, but you broaden your field of view in regards to human beings, that we all make mistakes, we get things right also, but according to our mistakes, we have to deal with the consequences of the choices that you're going to make. And the series uh, is successful in that sense, in not judging the characters. Uh, we are not pointing fingers at who is to blame for the problems, Vitor or Pedro. No, the series has a series, has an importance of really bringing to light uh, social and political themes that are very important. So we are talking about structural racism and the way that that is dealt in the context of Pedro's drug addiction and the entire political situation of Rio de Janeiro since the 1970s until the 2000s, the entry of the drug and how it messed with the society and even the nucleo, the, the, the core of the family of Pedro. There are many themes that are very interesting and I don't think that we can really say that they are all ending. No, they we, we all have to think about these. Oh, and just one thing before I forget. Because we are talking about a drama that is so, a relationship that is so humane, so human between a father and a son, or a, a son and, a, and his mother, I think that the series has a big potential to connect with any audience. Because in, in we are all fathers or sons, or, I mean, we might know somebody that is drug that has a drug addiction, has a drug problem, you live in a big city or a small city, the, the series have, has a lot of aspects that you can really identify.